What if there was just one program that would handle all of your astrophotography needs? What if that one program would allow you to have a full night of automated, hassle-free imaging? And what if that program already existed today? It would be called Sequence Generator Pro, and I'm gonna show you how to use it to set up all of your equipment right now. Take a moment to think about all of the equipment that you need to produce just a single photo. You have a telescope, a mount, a camera, you might also have a filter wheel and an autofocuser. It can be frustrating if just one of these devices or their software drivers fails to work in the middle of the night. There are many programs on the market today that do allow for full automation of your entire setup. However, none of these programs make it as easy or frustration free as Sequence Generator Pro does. If you don't already have Sequence Generator Pro, you can download a trial, which I recommend doing. The trial license is gonna come with all of the core features enabled out of the gates. You can use this trial period to practice setting up your equipment. And I would also recommend that you practice building out a few imaging sequences as well. After you install Sequence Generator Pro, it's easy to get all of your equipment set up so you can start using it right away. What makes Sequence Generator Pro so powerful is the ability to set up equipment profiles. And this is handy if you have multiple telescopes or cameras. Switching between the profiles is as simple as clicking the file menu and selecting the profile that you would like to use. To create equipment profiles in Sequence Generator Pro, click Tools and then Equipment Profile Manager. Create a name that's gonna be meaningful to you. I'm gonna use StellarView Unreduced ASI 1600 because this is gonna be the equipment profile I use for my ASI 1600 mounted directly to the StellarView without my focal reducer. And now that it's named, you can see that there are many more tabs available for all of your astrophotography equipment. These tabs are camera, filters, focus, telescope, that should be called mount, plate saw, auto guide, other. Starting in the camera tab, you can see that virtually every aspect of your camera can be pre-configured here. The filters tab is what allows you to configure your electronic filter wheel. And the most important part is the define filters list button. This is where you can set the filter positions, the filter names, and the autofocus exposure duration times. Unless you have a specific reason to do so, the filter that you're using for autofocus should be set to the same filter as the filter position. Focus points and flats is where you're going to set the autofocus position as well as the flat frame exposure times. If you want an in-depth review of how to set up the autofocus points and exposure times, check out this video here in the card for an in-depth walkthrough on the Sequence Generator Pro autofocus module. But for now, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown of the autofocuser settings. Here you can pick the autofocuser that you have connected to your telescope. For me, that's the Focus Lynx 2 autofocuser from Optech. There are a few quick options here that you can set. For instance, if you have a temperature compensating focuser, then you can enable that here to set the temperature focus compensation for your autofocuser. The other button is where you can put in driver overrides for your autofocuser. My software only allows a maximum of 255 steps for backlash compensation. However, I have a thousand steps that I need to clear the backlash. If you want a more comprehensive review on how to determine what your backlash is and how to compensate for it, you can check out the card here where I walk through the process I used to figure out what my backlash was. When a sequence starts, there's going to be a frame and focus routine that runs that gets your camera on center and then does a quick focus job to make sure that everything is going to work. Since this is meant just to be a rough frame and focus before the actual imaging begins, you can do something that'll allow for a quick framing and a quick focus run. So you can set as high as 4x4 binning if your camera supports it. I personally use 2x2. You can also set the autofocus exposure duration here. Because you're going to be binning, you can get by with really fast exposures, say 1 to 2 seconds. The telescope tab is where you can set up the connection interface to your mount, as long as it supports ASCOM. There aren't many settings here, fortunately, but I do recommend adjusting at least two of them. Parking your telescope when the sequence complete is useful because it'll prevent your telescope from continuing to track at sidereal rate after the sequence and can eliminate the potential for a peer collision. 
Also, using the auto meridian flip option is extremely important if you're gonna be doing long imaging sessions where your target crosses the meridian. Setting it to trigger as soon as the image completes after you've crossed the meridian will immediately flip your telescope to the other side of the meridian, center, frame and focus, and then resume the sequence. If you're going to do the auto meridian flip option, you're going to want a plate solver installed because it's going to need to frame and focus after the meridian flip to ensure that the meridian flip puts you back on target. For the plate solving, I use Plate Solve 2, which is provided free of charge to Sequence Generator Pro license holders. When using a plate solver, you do need to download an external catalog because these are third party tools that are maintained by other vendors and not Sequence Generator Pro. There aren't many settings necessary to get Plate Solve 2 to work, so I'm not going to go too deep into that now. There are, however, some framing and centering options that you do want to look at. The Auto Guide tab is where you can configure the connection to any auto guiding software that you might be using. PHD2 is a very popular tool that's out there and Sequence Generator Pro fully supports it. Other settings that you can set up in the Auto Guiding tab are things like dithering and Auto Guider setting times. In addition to those two settings, there are seven other options that you may want to look at. I would recommend that you pause guiding during autofocus routines in the event that there might be a large nudge issued by your auto guiding software that could ruin the autofocus exposure. This may have the unwanted effect of you accidentally losing your autofocus star. The other tab kind of holds all of the other equipment that I would call convenience equipment. These are things like flat boxes, dome controllers, and that kind of stuff. Things that not everybody might be using and are less common in astrophotography. Of all of this other equipment, I only use a flat box. The one that I use is the Alnatec Flip Flat, and I can configure its settings like this. The Flats Calibration Wizard is how I configure my flat frames. It's a huge time saver, but it does take a little bit of setup in the beginning. It uses an iterative process for each filter to determine what the proper exposure time is to get the perfect flats every time. Not everyone is using a flat device like I do, but for those of you who do and you're thinking about getting Sequence Generator Pro, you can click this card up here to watch the video on how I set up all of the exposure times with my flip flat. Now, at this point, I have all of my equipment configured in the equipment profile, and I can apply this profile to a sequence. So it's time to test out everything and make sure that my connections all work and that I can run a real fast test sequence without any hiccups. So you can see that I've got the M45 sequence loaded up on my laptop screen. And in here, I've got all of my equipment configured as well as my light and flat events. Um, my light frames are set to do two minutes each. I'm gonna capture 30 uh, of each one of those. After those, I'm going to go and take a flat frame. Um, each flat frame has its own exposure brightness on my flat box as well as exposure duration. And uh, I'm going to do 10 flats each. You can see those flats here. The sequence has already started, but it won't actually kick off for about another three minutes, at which time my telescope should wake up, move the flat box out of the way, and begin integrating the first subs. So, why don't we see what happens? <laughs> 